In this video, we're going to cover dividing by decimals using long division. In order to do this, you're obviously going to have to already know how to do long division. If you need help with that, you're going to have to watch other videos on how to do long division. So let me just take you through a couple examples and you can start to understand what you have to do if you want to divide decimals using long division. So first example here is what is 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths? So step one, you got to know which one goes in the house and the first number always goes in the house. The first number is what we call the dividend and it goes into the division house. Now the other number stays outside of the division house, that's the number you're dividing by. And I like to think, hey, that number's outside, it needs a visor, it's the divisor. And the divisor, the outside number, needs to be a whole number. Obviously, 0.3 or 3 tenths is not a whole number, so we want to make it into a whole number. And we're just going to make it into the number 3. But you have to think, how did we change 3 tenths into 3? Well, that's a times 10, or a single decimal shift. And we want to change the dividend, the inside number, the exact same factor, by the exact same factor. So we changed it by 10, a power of 10, to slide the decimal to make it 3 tenths into 3 holes. So you want to slide the decimal one spot in the dividend as well, or multiply it by 10. So 9 tenths times 10 is just 9, or you can think of it as a single de decimal shift, and it goes from being in front of the 9 to behind the 9. Now once the decimal is in your dividend, you're going to want to go in and make sure, this is important, that you put the decimal right on the roof of the division house, because that's where the decimal will be in your answer. And then, once it's set up like that, your divisor's whole, you've changed your dividend by the same factor, and you've put your decimal on the roof, then you just do long division. You can ignore the decimals and just start dividing. In this case, 3 goes into 9 three times, and that would terminate there. So my answer is just simply 3. It's 3 point, or just 3, the whole number. Let's go through a few more examples. So here's another one, 4 divided by 5 tenths, first number goes into the house, it's the dividend, outside number needs a, vi a visor, it's the divisor, we need our divisor to be whole number, and 0.5 is not a whole number, so we want to make it into a whole number. And we're going to keep doing what we've been doing, I mean I could multiply it by 2 if I wanted to, but I'm just going to multiply it by 10, 100, or 1000 to slide the decimal over. So here, um, to make it whole, I'm going to turn it into the number 5 by doing times 10, which is a single decimal shift to move the decimal behind the 5 and make it a 5 holes. Now the inside number of the dividend has to be changed by that same factor, so that means I have to multiply it by 10. So 4 times 10 is 40. Uh, you can also think of it as a, there's an invisible decimal behind that 4, and that decimal has to be moved, and a 0 can be added behind that number. But also you could just think, well, it's 4 times 10, which is 40. So once I have it set up like this, I'm just going to make sure I put my decimal on my roof because that tells me where my whole number stops and where my decimal number begins in my answer space. And then I can start dividing, but I won't even really need that decimal here because 5 goes into 48 times, and that would terminate there. So 1 half or 0.5 goes into 4 8 times. Now they're not all that simple. Let's get into ones that may be a little bit more complex. Here we have what is 1 and 2 tenths divided by 8 tenths. So the steps are all the same though. I put the first number in the house. 1 and 2 tenths is my dividend. One point, or 0 0.8 is outside. It needs a visor. It's the divisor. And it's not whole. The divisor needs to be whole. And so I'm going to change it from being 0.8 or 8 tenths just to being 8. Now when I do that, I have to ask myself, how did I do that? It was a single decimal shift, moving the decimal behind the 8 to make it times 10. So I need to do that with the 12. I need to move the decimal from in front of the 2 to behind the 2 in order to change the dividend by the same factor of 10. So I'm making both of them 10 times bigger. When I do that, I get 12. Point. Now that point's important. I put it there because that's where it will go in my answer spot, just like the last examples. But this time it's actually going to matter, and you'll see why in a second. When you start to do your division, you can ignore those decimals and just start dividing. 8 can't go into 1, but it does go into 12 one time, and then do your long division. From there, we get a remainder of 4. Now you can start adding zeros after that decimal as well. So I'm going to add a 0, bring it down, and because adding zeros after a decimal doesn't change the value of 12, it's still 12. 
It's not like I'm making it 12 into 120 because the decimal tells me that's where it stops and the decimal's in my answer spot, so I can add zeros as long as I want or I need to. So eight goes into 45 times and that's actually where this one terminates. So the answer is 1.5 or one and a half. Eight tenths goes into one and two tenths one and a half times or 1.5 times. So the steps are all the same, but that time we actually crossed over the decimal mark to continue to divide until we got a terminating decimal. That means a zero is the remainder. So here we go, and the next example is 4.8 divided by three. So again, same steps, first number goes in the house, the dividend's 4.8, and three is the outside number, it needs the divisor, it's the divisor. It is whole this time. The, the divisor is whole, which is great, that makes me happy. When the divisor is whole, I don't have to change anything. I don't have to multiply anything by 10 or 100. I just have to do one thing before I start dividing, and that's making sure that my decimal ends up on the roof. The dividend being a decimal doesn't matter. As, as long as the decimal gets on the roof, I can start ignoring the decimal. I only really need the divisor, the outside number, to be whole so that I can divide by threes because I know how to count by threes and I'm not as good as counting by point threes and that's why we change it to be whole. But this is already three, so I'm good. Three goes into four once and you can subtract, you get your remainder one and then you bring down your eight and three goes into 18 six times and that would terminate there. So it's 1.6 and you can see why having that decimal on the roof makes a big difference because if I didn't put that decimal there and I thought the answer was 16, I would be way off. The answer is not 16. The answer is 1.6. Um, and that's why getting that decimal on your roof is so, so important. All right, so we'll go through just a couple more examples. Here's a, here's a cool one here. Uh, this one is 516 thousandths divided by 200. So a little bit different here. There's a lot more decimal digits, but the steps are all the same. So you're still going to put the first number in the house, which in this case is 516 thousandths, and two hundredths is on the outside of the decimal. Now I still need my divisor to be whole, and two, the outside number needs a divisor. It's not, it, it is the divisor, and it's not whole, it's, it's two hundredths. I need to make it into the number two, because I want to divide by two instead of two hundredths. Now this one's a little different, because you'll notice that it's actually a two decimal shift. I slid, I slid the decimal past the zero and past the two, so it's a two decimal shift in order to make it a two. And I need to do a two decimal shift on the, the dividend or the inside number as well. Now if I slide the decimal over to the right, I move it past the five and past the one, that would be the same factor of a hundred this time, and that two decimal shift makes makes it 51.6. It goes past the five and past the one. Those are my two decimal hops when I multiply it by 100. Now both numbers are 100 times bigger and I can start dividing after I make sure I get that decimal on the roof. Decimal after my divisor's whole and my dividend has been changed by that same factor, I need to make sure I get my decimal on my roof. Then I can start dividing. So once you get there, you just start doing your regular long division. You can ignore the decimals at that point and just start putting two into five and getting your remainders and bringing down and dividing again. Two goes into 11, five times to give me 10 and subtracting. And you just keep going. Oh, here it'll terminate. Two goes into 16, eight times. You just keep going until you get that remainder of zero. Now there's also cases where the decimal re will repeat and that's separate cases and we won't go into that in this video. Um, in these examples, the decimal will always do what's called terminate, which is get a zero in your remainder at some point. All right, next example is 14.4 or 14 and 4 tenths divided by 3 hundredths. This one is a good one to, to watch because it's a little different than the others. Um, in that you'll have to you'll have to just see how, where this goes, but the steps are always the same. I'm still going to put the first number in the house. That's my dividend, 14.4. 0.03 is outside. It needs a visor. It's the divisor, and it's still not whole. So I'm going to have to make it a whole number. I'm going to change it to be the number three. And then I need to think, okay, well that was a two decimal shift or a times hundred shift. I need to change the dividend by that same factor of a hundred. So I need to move the decimal twice on the inside number. Now you'll notice that if I move it once, I'm out of numbers. 
So in order to move it twice, I'd have to add an extra zero at the end, because you sometimes will have to do that, add an extra zero at the end to make it 1,440. Now that seems big, but I made three hundredths a hundred times bigger, and now I'm making 14.4 a hundred times bigger. So yes, it's going to be a bigger number. I have to make sure that my decimal gets up on the roof, and then I can start dividing. Three goes into 14. Four times to give me 12, I'll subtract, I'll get two, I'll bring down my four, I divide into 24 and I get an eight and that terminates there. But you'll notice that because I put my decimal on the roof there, I can see that there's still a number to fill in there. There's a blank that has to go in over that last zero and I can put a zero there because three can't go into zero. So sometimes that will happen too where it looks like your numbers terminate but because where you place the decimal, you have to finish it off by adding zeros at the end. That was 480. So that is the gist. I hope this helps. Good luck.